Hello, I am Dr. RJ Burr, and I am about to present to you what I believe is the most important concept in human function and musculoskeletal medicine, and that is the core ABCs, which we're going to get into right now. The first part is going to be the quick uh, nitty gritty of it, and then afterward, if you'd like to stick around, we're going to d dive a little bit deeper into the nitty gritty of it. So, the core ABCs. What does the ABC stand for? Alignment, breathing, and control. So the first part's alignment, and as you can see here, A with the green meaning good, we see the rib cage is stacked over the pelvis. So this is a ideal neutral spine, sometimes it's called. It's a little bit different on everyone, but you can see from this cartoon here, this neutral position has its normal curve of that low back, where the pelvis is relatively parallel to the ground, where on B here, this is a what we call an open scissors position where the rib cage is flared out and the pelvis is shifting, or the belt buckle on the pelvis is pointing downward. And that the problem with that is that creates excessive extension and compression on the lumbar spine and the low back. So it doesn't allow our core to stabilize our bones of the back as well as they could in this position. And then in the cartoon, this looks like what I sometimes call a J-Lo booty here, where maybe it might be aesthetically pleasing at times, but in function, this can lead to problems like chronic back pain. Next is the breathing, okay? So uh, I'll move this out of the way here and you can see in the bottom left from my face is there's two main functions of breathing. Respiration, that's getting oxygen in your lungs. We're all good at that, obviously, if you're watching this, we're, we're alive. But breathing's number two function is postural stability. And how that works is through activation of your breathing muscle, the diaphragm that's here, that's inside your rib cage. This dome-shaped muscle contracts and what it does is it pushes down into your abdomen to create pressure in here. So if you can see my mouse here, it's when you inhale, the arrow going down, that's the diaphragm. It's kind of like a piston and a cylinder head if you're familiar with engines and cars. It pushes down and then it creates pressure throughout that the, the can, your abdominal canister. So think of this like a pop or a soda can here, right? If you have a soda can that's been cracked, you can crush it, but if it's pressurized and hasn't been opened, right, that pressure keeps it rigid. So when we breathe, we can go through a cycle of rigid pop can or soda can into that one we can crush. So when you breathe in and use this diaphragm, it creates pressure, what I'm gonna keep calling our abdominal pop can, okay? All right, so next is the pop can. So um, here, we're looking from the top and looking down. Back here would be our back muscles. The side here would be our oblique muscles and the sides, and right here would be our abs in front. That all around here, including what's called the transverse abdominus crate, uh, what we see is the core, our abdomen. And so that is our, our soda pop can. And then what happens is on top here, my hand being the diaphragm, it goes up and down and that creates uh, what's the circular or centrifugal pressure throughout the abdomen. Well, why is that important? Because that pushes against the spine. Obviously, there's guts in your abdomen and all that stuff, but that pushes against the spine, and then the pop can keeps it contained, which leads us to the next picture, is that when we have intra-abdominal pressure from the diaphragm pushing into the spine, and then we have the soda pop can, giving an equal and opposite force in the other direction, it goes back to high school physics, one of Newton's laws, like the third one, is that two equal and opposite forces, that's gonna help keep your spine upright. So they're pushing together to keep those bones straight up and down because, well, bones don't float in thin air. They don't hold up themselves. It's our muscular contraction and control that does that through creating that pressure. And so here's a nice little uh, video here to uh, simulate or give you a visual of how this works. So when I press play here, we'll give it a little moment. What you're gonna see is the diaphragm inside your rib cage here. Here's your abdominal pop can. And when you breathe in, it contracts and your abdomen expands sort of like a balloon. And then when you breathe out, it contracts. So when we do our breathing, our breaths, we should be able to fill up our abdominal balloon to create pressure. All right, next slide. All right, so when we break it down to human function, this is one of my favorite pictures because it just, it, it breaks down human function in a nutshell, is 
when you create pressure in your pop can or soda can here through activation of your diaphragm, that pressure is what stabilizes our spine and our pelvis, which are quite literally bony anchor points from where these big mover muscles pull from. The big movers are our arms and legs. They have to pull from an anchor point, and that anchor point is the spine and pelvis for most of these muscles. The traps, the deltoids, the lats, the glutes, hamstrings, quads, all that stuff somehow pulls from the pelvis. So we need a stable anchor point in order for those muscles to be efficient, right? So imagine you're running on a beach versus running on cement. Which one is more stable? Which one's easier to run in? I can guarantee you if I raced myself on cement versus the beach, I'm gonna beat my beach self by far because there's less stability in the ground. There's more give, less efficiency on the beach. You can create more power um, through the a force through the cement. So we want our spine and our pelvis to be more stable like cement than we would the beach. And we do that through breathing uh, properly or ideally into our abdomen. Another great thing that happens too is that when we breathe that way, it actually creates decompression of the spine and the rib cage as well. So we actually get elongation there and less compression even when under load like with a barbell as this car cartoon has here. It's actually great for people with disc or back issues. So when we look at uh, form and function, a lot of times we think uh, Arnold here on the right, you know, this is aesthetically pleasing, but this is not great. This is more for show and this is for go. This looks great, but this is not functional. This here, you're, if, if, if Arnold here is gonna pull a semi truck like this gentleman here, there's gonna be problems here. But there's less efficiency and control at the spine here. Well, this guy here is also aesthetically pleasing. He's strong, has abs, all that stuff, but you can see he's more filled out. This is more for go. And so Arnold may be able to do this too. So just when we practice this breathing stuff, what I want to make clear is that when you start breathing this way and expanding your belly, it doesn't mean you're going to get a bubble belly or a big old abdomen. It just means can you do it? Because just as well as you can push your stomach out, you can also suck it in like this too. So if you're going to take a picture on the beach or a selfie, suck it in all you want. But when you live life and, and doing things around the day, we got to be able to use this and expand here, right? And we want to make sure that we're connected, right? That alignment, that breathing and control, it's all of our abdominal muscles working in unison. We need to be synchronized in order for that to happen because if we're not synchronized or disconnected, we can't do that. Right? And so then lastly, we want to control movements, so whether it's picking up a child or anything, uh, it can be sports, or even as crazy as some heavy power lifting, it's all really the same mechanism, it's just, this is just less load, medium load, and more load. And then ultimately, we also want to be able to maintain that alignment too. We want to be able to lift with our hips and our legs and not so much our back and lose that alignment. Right, and then um, we, we typically teach these in, in using developmental positions. So in the core ABCs program that we have, we use the three month position, we use the seven month position, and then we also use, um, where is it? Oh, seven month here and as well as 12 month here to train the core ABCs. Why do we use development? Well, we think about it as a baby, or if you have kids, you didn't teach your kids how to move. This is ingrained in our neurology, which we'll go to in the advanced part of this. It's ingrained in our, our neurology, these patterns. And as we grow and we challenge and we fail and we struggle through this, this is how we learn bipedal movement or basically how to walk on two feet is by going through these progressions. So as adults, we can emulate these positions to retrain certain functions so that way it's more efficient in our adult positions such as this, right? Because we want to be able to be on two feet and use the ABCs. So in this cartoon here, the stick is showing alignment, right? And then most of a movement that we do is a lot of hip hinging, whether it's squatting, lunging, bending, so on and so forth, it's a hip hinge. And so we want to be able to use that hip hinge in alignment. We want to breathe through it and be able to control the movement. And then this picture over here is showing, this is the open scissors. Um, that's when we're disconnected. We get a lot of extra um, pull on the back muscles here, a lot of extra pull in the quad muscles and on the hip flexors there. So if you've got some hip flexor issues and low back issues, 
I can guarantee you, you've got some anterior pelvic tilt or, a, or open scissors or just a lack of, control, of neutral spine control. Where when we get in neutral, we get more activation of the glutes, hamstrings, and well as the abs to keep us more connected.